It is time to us to finally witness the battle between two of the top teams in the South Division. We have the Zamboanga Families Brand Sardines in town to take on the Bacoor City Strikers inside the Strike Gym in Bacoor City, Cavite. Bacoor is already locked in as the number one seeded team in the South. And on the other end, JC Marcelino and the rest of Zamboanga are looking to secure that number four spot in the South Division for home court advantage come the playoffs. Jander Bal, by the way, has been splendid all season long for Baco Or, and obviously that all-star selection of his was well warranted, representing Coach Alex Angeles and the rest of Baco Or in our all-star day. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. This is Vix Gomez at your service alongside Javi Balanya and Mika Abisabis. Now, Javi, uh, talk to us just how important this game is for Zamboanga. Not only the playoff bid, you know, the home court advantage for them, but in terms of momentum, how important will their perform performance be for tonight? Well, this caps off, this could cap off a very impressive run for them. Right after our FIBA World Cup break, they came out firing, taking down the defending, defending champions and whoever I see rise vanguards. And in their last game, they delivered another thriller to us, winning a close game against Basic City. This win in their last game, aside from the momentum that you mentioned, could very well be a good springboard for them heading into the playoffs and also to remind everybody that, hey, we are the defending Southern Division champions. Now we do thank you for joining us live on MPTV Channel 98 of Signal TV. Also on our live streams on Facebook and on YouTube. Now speaking of uh, two of the top teams in the South Division, we have to review what's happening right now in the MPBL. But let's begin with the North. Yeah, pasadahan lang natin itong mabilis itong Northern Division, Pampanga. And Nueva ACL already on the lock in the number one and two spots as well as Pasay. But as for the three, four, five, and six spots, that is still something that is being disputed by Makati, San Juan, Caloocan, and Pasig City. Meanwhile, the last spot in the playoffs in the North are being fought over by Marikina and Bataan. If Bataan and Marikina fall into a tie, Bataan will be the one going into the Northern Division playoffs because they won over Marikina early in the season. Now in the South Division. Now let's take a look as mentioned by Mix at the top of our coverage. Bacor City is already a lock at the number one spot. Ilo Ilo is also the same at the number eight spot. Pero every team in the middle puede pa magiba ibang position jan. Particularly itong Zamboanga and Quezon. Zamboanga, if they win today, they have a good chance of getting home court advantage. But Quezon has to lose their remaining games for Zamboanga to have a lock on that number four spot. But regardless, Zamboanga and Quezon, yan na maglalaban sa ating first round. Now, we all know how important home court advantage is for the Quezon Huskers come the playoffs. They will actually defend their home court this coming Saturday against Paranaque back in Quezon Province. Now, let's talk about the previous game of the Zamboanga family's brand sardines, as mentioned by Javi. Boy, what a victory that was against Pasig City. Everybody thought that Pasig was going to win it if not for that technical foul on Coach Boyd Fernandez. Uh, exactly. That was such a very competitive ball game that that we witnessed another thriller delivered to us by the reigning Southern Division champions. It was an escape against Pasig City after taking down Nueva Ecija on their home floor, uh, their first home defense of the season. Itong laro na to, akala ng lahat ng tao sa loob ng Inares Arena, panalo na dito ang Pasig City. But it was a very competitive game. 19 ties and 18 lead changes in this game. And we needed five more minutes to decide the winner of this match. As you can see the numbers here, although Pasig City was ahead in the field goal and three-point field goal percentage in that match. It was the points in the paint, the production inside and the bench pr production para sa kapunan nila Coach Arnold Contorno at Coach Louis Alas. Coach Louis was actually not in the venue mm -hmm. to coach his squad because he was supporting his youngest son, Kiefer, in our FIBA Under-16 Asian Championships. But still, he was able to prepare his team very well in the event na magdikit nga sila and that's exactly what happened. They maintained their composure. A lot of guys performed well for them in that game. I also want to give acknowledgement to Joseph Gabaini's improved performance in that game para sa kanila. Actually, pagbalik nga raw ni Coach Louis from Qatar, sinabihan niya agad si Joseph Gabaini. Oh, medyo lumaki ka ulit ah. And that might be a big factor on Joseph Gabaini's playoff appearance. Obviously, now he has 
to be coming out great against the Bacoor City Strikers. Now let's talk about the previous game of Bacoor. This is a team that we have missed because uh, one of their previous outings, the game versus Bataan, got postponed. No? So let's talk about that win versus Negros. Yeah, they have been the hottest team in the league with six straight wins, including this one against the Negros Muscovados. You compare to Zambanga's last game against Pasig, this was a game where Bacoor City blew wide open maaga pa lang. They got off to an early lead. 24-11 in the third quarter to carry a 69-49 to lead heading into the final period. And they just didn't look back anymore. They used this as a good warm-up for the winding down games in their regular season campaign. As we look at the numbers, 48%. They dished out the ball very well, 26-18. to And with the depth that we see from them, they dominated 52-26 to as well as their bench delivering. So it was a total team effort for the boys of Coach Alex Angeles. One that he, I'm sure, is very proud of to see from his team, especially right now where he expects his squad to be very sharp heading into the most important part of the season. Well, it's been a while. Let's hope that they don't have some rust coming into their venue today here in the strike gym. After all, this will be their 14th home court defense of the season. Now let's talk about our player matchup. We have one of the MPBL legends in Marky going up against a guy that you just mentioned, Joseph Gabaini. Well, we can see the stats from their respective last games. No? Double-double effort for Joseph Gabaini. I'd like to talk about more of Joseph Gabaini in this one. We know that he's a guy who can deliver the goods, but somehow he has not fit yet into the system of Zamboanga. That game, though, he showed it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he is very much looking forward to this matchup against Marky because Marky, even though he has not been delivering those eye-popping numbers that we've been used to seeing from him, I'm sure in this game, as important as it is, kahit na walang bearing, I know that he will use this as a good warm-up in time for the playoffs. Well, as he continues to lose weight for Zamboanga, itong si Joseph Gavani, we can see it on the court. He's going in with so much energy from the All-Star break, so let's see how he can perform against Marky. Those two players are now with Nika Bisanas. I am with two of the toughest players from the South Division, Joseph Gabaini and Mark Yi. Joseph, napansin namin lately, mas aggressive ka, mas focused ka, lalo na sa loob. Pero pag narinig natin yung word na focus, alam natin, forte yan ng nag-iisang Mark Yee. Sabi mo nga kanina, Kuya Mark, first five ka ba? Anong nasa isip mo ngayon? Nakalaban mo siya. Uh, Siyempre, excited. Siyempre, uh, kalala naman natin yung caliber na, na player ni Kuya Mark. So, Alam natin yung mabibigay niya sa court. So, ready ako and gusto ko rin, marami rin ako matututunan sa kanya. Kaya, mas maganda yung uh, in-expect ko na magiging laban namin. Actually, pangalawang beses namin maglalaban. Like, nung una sa Bulacan pa ako. Kaya, ngayon, parang mas uh, mainit na mas gusto kong bumawi. Yun. Maraming salamat, Joseph Gabayni. Mark, uh, excited daw si Joseph makalaban ka, no? Pero alam naman natin, ang Zamboanga, mabilis sila, puro takbuhan. Paano ka nag-prepare physically para sa larong ito? Hindi, uh, hindi lang naman ako. Kung baga, lahat ng mga coaches namin, kasi sila yung nag-ihirap lagi para sa game na, na to, lalo na to. Pero ano lang, uh, gawin lang namin yung normal naming laro. And then sa akin, yun, yun lang. Uh, wala talagang pinagbaba, kundi dasa lang. And then si Pagsaga lang. Maraming salamat ang nag-iisang Marky and of course, Joseph Gabayni. Now it's Zamboanga versus Bacoor. Richard Tampos, let's do this. Fighting Strike Gym, the marching band, the capital of the Philippines, Bacoor City, Cavite. Tonight's main game is Zamboanga versus your Bacoor Strikers. This is the 2023 OK Bet, Manny Pacquiao's MPBL Season 5 presented by Extreme. Time to meet the starting lineups first for Zamboanga Family's Brand Sardines. Playing center number 91, Chris Dumapig. Power forward number 16, Adi Santos. Small forward number two, Judel Puentes. From the guard line, the Marcelino Twins, JB Marcelino and the reigning MVP, JC Marcelino. Zamboanga Family's brand Sardis head coach is Louis Alas. His assistants are Arnold Contorno, Gilbert Castillo, Cesar Paulhen, and Francis Allen. Team representative Antoinette Droge. Team owners are T.P. Cow and Miss Anita Cow. Strike first, strike fast, strike them all. Your Bacoor City Strikers. Playing 
center number eight, Jamo Aguilos. At guard number nine, Aaron Heruta. Starting at guard number 15, the quick James Fox. James Quick Gute. Small forward number 29, the elastic man, John Nermal. Power forward number 52, from Barangay Mambog, Mark Yee. Bahor Strikers, Philippine.com is led by Alex Angeles, assistant coaches RB Mangas, Marlo Corbin, Dix Guadamore, the skyscraper, Marlo Aquino, Roy Suemans. Presenting the starters for Zamboanga and Bahor, we have the Marcelino Twins being joined by Pisto Mapig, Judel Fuentes, and Adi Santos for Zamboanga. And then it's Aaron Heruta with James Cuecute, Jamo Aguilos is back by the way, Marky and Jan Nermal complete the front court of the Bahor City Strikers. Again, Bahor is already secured as the number one seeded team in the South Division. They will take on Iloilo in the first round of the playoffs. On the other end, Zamboanga is still battling for home court advantage alongside the Quezon Huskers who will take action this coming Saturday in Quezon Province against Paranaque. And there you see Coach Louis Alas back in action for Zamboanga going up against the South Division All-Stars head coach in Alex Angeles. Thank you for joining us. This is Mix Gomez at your service alongside Javi Palanya and Mika Abisamis. Javi, what do you want to see at the start of this game? Well, I'm looking for Bacoor to try to get into their sets. Obviously, there's more post-action concerning the Bacoor City Strikers. More execution as well. I'm looking for Zamboanga to try and get on the run at the start of this game, especially with the Marcelino Twins starting again para sa kanila. Aaron Heruta will go to Mark Key. Remember, the core of Bacolod lost to Zamboanga last year in the playoffs. So there is also a bit of a revenge factor here for a couple of these Bacor City strikers. JV Marcelino using the pick of Ari Santos. Now the ball is with Cristo Mapic. Jodel Puentes going right, fadeaway shot. That is good. Most people might try to still expect Jodel Puentes to try and duplicate the type of numbers that he was able to post with San Juan last year. But I'm telling you, that's not going to happen again, at least with, when he's still here with Zamboanga. What you can expect is the way that he's been blending into the system for Coach Luya last the production is there. Everything is more scattered out now for Zamboanga because of the system that Coach Luis Alas has put in for the family's brand sardines. And it has been very beneficial. Nice forward pass. JC Marcelino finds Adi Santos. They'll push the basketball when they can, as evidenced by that last play. But you saw their first couple of possessions. They really tried to run their offense. James Cuecute, screened by Egilos. There's the pull-up and the make for James Cuecute. Oh, you were asking James if he was 100% heading into this match. That shot might just typify that kind of performance that he's going to have in this game. James Cuecute was supposed to be an all-star for Bahor, but because of an ankle injury, he wasn't able to make it. Now, JV Marcelino was just fouled on his drive. In fact, it was Jan Nermal who actually produced well for the South All-Stars in the All-Star game. And take a look at this shot. Jan Nermal was one of the top scorers of the South. He was definitely the top scorer in the opening quarter as he played alongside JC Marcelino and Joseph Gabaini. First one was good for JV. One out of two at that. Balik tayo sa Bacoor with Aaron Heruta. Heruta was part of that Bacolod core last year. Same goes for Marky and Jan Nermal, three of the five starters of the strikers. Heruta's in trouble. There's the pass inside, Egilos. He recovers and scores. The team that will, will be able to dictate the pace in this game will have the bigger chance of victory. You know, gas-gas naman yan. Yung remark na yan, but that's just to point out the fact that Zamboanga 
they would want to play faster while it's Bacor. They like to dump it down in the post and see production from their frontline players. Could that have been a goaltend? Yes, it's going to count. Or are the referees going to review this first? It looked like it already hit the board when the ball was blocked. That's what Adi Santos was pleading to the referees. The score is 5-4. to four, Almost three minutes gone by in the opening frame. This is the last week of MPBL regular season action. And yes, that is going to count for Adi Santos. Tomorrow, folks, we will go back to Palayan City in Nueva Ecija before we proceed to Imos in Quezon Province. And there's the goal pen. That's an easy call. Aaron Neruta on to Jamo Egulos. He missed him as well. Egulos to Cuecote. His three-pointer is good. Five points to open the corner for James Cuecote. That's a welcome sign for the Bacor City Strikers, especially now that they're wrapping up their season heading into the playoffs. Now that's redemption from Jamo Egulos who swatted away the shot of Adi Santos as we take a look at our three-point shot brought to you by Extreme One Stop Shop Appliances. The leading scorer of Bacoor in this season, James Cuecote, averaging 11.3 points per game, just ahead of Jander Mal, reminding us why he was selected as one of the South Division All-Stars. 7-all. the strike gymnasium for your OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, I'd like to break down this report to two things about Zamboanga. First would be about Bacoor. Coach Louis Ella said as much as possible, gusto niya may fresh legs. Kailangan daw yung rotation nila mabilis and maayos ang communication. Ingatan din daw ang big men ng strikers dahil may mga tira din daw yan. Now to the second part, yung mas gusto kong part, I asked him kung sino pa sa players niya ang gusto niya makita mag-improve for the playoffs. Bilang Zamboanga is one of those unpredictable strong contenders of the league. Sabi niya si John Mahari, although wala siyang reklamo sa defense, gusto niya tutukan ng offense. Same with Tosi Tansinko. Tapos ito na, yung pagka-veteran coach. Make your off-night effective. Hindi lang sa points nakatingin dapat. Get rebounds and deflections while also doing hockey assists. Lahat yan wala sa stats, pero sa akin may puntos yan. To be honest, I googled all of these things. Migs, Javi. Wow. What a great report. Now, obviously, a lot of people are for sure, rooting for John Mahari, who has been a fantastic role player for the Zamboanga family's brand sardines. Ever since the coaching change of Zamboanga, we have been noticing the increase of minutes for Mr. Mahari himself, as now a traveling violation is called on Adi Santos. But on the latter point of Mika Bissam is about the intangibles on the court coming from Coach Louis Alas and company. That is one of the things that usually Coach Louis Gonzalez reminds us about on air. So how about that, Javi? Just great wisdom imparted onto us again. And that's why hindi ka na magtataka kung bakit ang daming success na nakuha ni Coach Louis Alas in his career. Champion coach, a guy who knows how to win, what it takes to get those wins, and what it takes to win championships. Kaya di mo na talaga magkakaila kay Coach Louie Alas. Yung mga maliliit na bagay na yun, it may be so for a lot of the common folk. But to guys like Coach Louie, those are the things that truly matter. The score is 7-all as Fuentes drives and feeds. And that's two points for Chris Dumapig. Even Chris Dumapig has found a comfortable place in the rotation of Coach Louie Alas. He has been a constant starter for the family's brand sardines and he has been repaying that trust pretty well. You gotta be happy for him most especially because boy was he lost in the earlier rotation of Zamboanga. We even saw him have some DNPs. He sat out a ton of games. Nice feed by Jadel Fuentes onto Mr. Dumapi. Hey, one thing that Jadel Fuentes has been improving is his ability to make decisions on the bounce. We've criticized him a lot for not being able to make the right plays but the number of repetitions, the number of times he's had 
to make those decisions, especially in tight situations, has hardened his resolve in these types of plays. Aaron Heruta trying to go for two for two. And yes, he was able to achieve that. So now the score is 9 all here in the marching band capital of the Philippines. That should explain the noise that you have been hearing here inside the strike gym. JC Marcelino onto Adi Santos. Mid-range pull-up is good. And even the increased confidence of Adi Santos to pull up for those perimeter jumpers. How many times have we seen that from Adi Santos pre-coach Luis Alas? Matalang. Oh, oh, almost none. Aaron Hiruta. Drive and feed. Pass was too wide for Jemo Egilos. It's also the increased and renewed commitment on the defensive end para dito sa Zamboanga. Coach Louis, this is a guy who puts a lot of premium on the defensive side of the basketball and he expects his players to be able to deliver that same kind of intensity he has been able to put on his previous squads. Now, what I like about your comment is the fact that Japs Bautista told me that, yes, their defense has improved, but there was also a lot of premium in improving the offense of Zamboanga. That I would want you to evaluate in this game because, yes, there are a lot of expectations as to Zamboanga achieving a ton in come the playoffs, and they're going to have to play much higher of caliber going up against the other playoff teams. Forward pass, James Cuecute. That's basket and one. It's no question. James has always been a great scorer, a great finisher, especially in the open floor. What people have come to notice, galing dito kay James, is his ability to perform and show out in the big games. Especially when there is so much on the line. So, yan ang titing na natin heading into the playoffs. Galing dito kay James Quekote. You would think that coming from a great school in San Beda in the NCAA, that he would be used to pressure back situations. But this is a different level. Playing in the MPBL is so much different from playing in college. Even if it could be the same type of atmosphere, quote unquote, with the packed arenas. It's still different playing against grown men who have been at this type of level for so many years already. Let's see what happened in the previous sequence on the scramble as Shadel Puentes in trouble with James Cuecute. It looked to have been a foul on Baco or either Nagbal or Cuecute. It was definitely on James. John Mahari just checked in. Mika did report about him being a marquee player for Coach Louis Alas. His defense has always been there. We saw him start for a couple of games in the playoffs last year because of his defense. But let's see what he can do on the offensive side. Well, his added production actually makes could be one of the big testaments to how Coach Louis has been able to improve the offense of Zamboanga. Mark Yee now delivers from downtown. We talked about him. If there's going to be a Hall of Fame in the MPBL, he should be the first name out there. Totoyan. Now Mark Yee lost his balance. John Mahari almost lost the ball. Seven on the shot clock. He will fire from three. That short. Ball tapped and recovered by Heruta. Eight on surveys. Back up to Joey Liu. Now they go to Marquee. Mismatch against King Caralipio. Yi taking his time. 11 on the shot clock. Marquee to Egilos. Jamo will have to fire. That's off to the right. Ooh, a steal, but a foul as well on Aaron Hiruta. <laughs> Marquee kicked it out to Jamo with the thought that he was already ready to catch and shoot from that area. Kaya lang Egilos, he hesitated for a bit before he stepped into that jumper. And as we know for shooters, sometimes the hesitation can change your shot. There's the foul on Aidan Hiruta, who was obviously very unhappy with that call. He was already ecstatic with his steal. Couple of subs now. Jammer Hamito and Alvin Aldai will check in. The other end is Joseph Gabaini. And... 
Luciano Caballero, who have come in for Zamboanga. 14-11. JC Marcelino against Joey Liu. Up top, Carolipio to Caballero. The former Rizal point guard, Otto Mahari. Six on the shot clock. Not much spacing there. Recovery for Caralipio. Tough shot. He makes it. A little bit of miscommunication between Caralipio and JC Marcelino on who would be receiving that basketball off of the pop out. But that time, Caralipio still able to make it work. 14 to 13 now. Mark Yee fakes and passes. Joey Lee Yu. Back to Yee. Top of the key. Off to the right. Rebound, Gabaini. A little good give and go there for Bacor City. Just unable to hit the shot with Mark Yee. But it's tied up by King Caralipio. He almost lost his balance and the ball as well. Nice defense by Joel Liu, but there's the escape. Nice block as well by Mark Yee. Miss from Gabaini, and here come the strikers. Joel Liu down the middle. Pass to Hamito. Short stab. No good. Rebound Yee. Couple of passes. Hamito will score. A way for Joel Liu to still trust Jammer Hamito with that drop pass after he missed the first short jumper. Nice drop off pass on the other hand, and Joseph Gabani was fouled. As we bring you this epic move of the game, in partnership with OK Bet together we win. King Caralipio against the reigning defensive player of the year. What a spin move against the outstretched arm of Marquis. Anytime you have King going left, it's gonna be difficult to guard him, especially if he gets the step on you, that time that spin allowing him to create separation from Mark Yee. Here's Joseph Gabaini, who has been a topic for us ever since the arrival of Coach Louis Alas, ever since the All-Star break as well. Boy, this guy, we saw him go for a duck in the All-Star game, a testament to his rejuvenation. And he did admit that to me, that he lost his sight ever since playing for Bulacan. But he has recognized that he needs to start from the bottom again, back to zero. He needs to earn his way to the top. And to do that, he needs to be able to become a good role player for Zamboanga come the playoffs. And that's great humility coming from Joseph Gabani. He had to think that he was trying to work for something again. That explains his reinvigorated play here for Zamboanga. That last game for Pasig was the crowning jewel for me in that process para kay Gabayni. We can only hope that it continues. Aside from the numbers that we showed in the player matchup at the top of our coverage, 10 points and 13 rebounds, he also had two blocked shots mm -hmm. in that game mix. 16 to 14, Amito was hit. But he traveled beforehand. So it's a turnover. Good tight defense there on the two-man game by Zamwanga, preventing Hamito from getting an opportunity to get a shot off. Let's coach Luis Alas. 90 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Yano Caballero on to JC Marcelino. Against this zone of Bacoor, Gabaini pounding his way through. No basket, but boy, that effort of both Gabaini and Caralipio just led to that putback. And you see how he's not really rattled despite the pressure that was all around him there were three blue shirts in the area but he was unfazed just pure domination by joseph Gabaini. tied at 16 now a minute to go in the opening frame alvin aldai trying to escape the defense of mahari no basket what a rebound by the mvp and here comes jc marcel nino he was fouled pure athleticism and greatness on both ends of the floor, Galing sa ating reigning MVP, towering over everybody with that defensive rebound, did not show any fear in pushing the basketball as well as going up for the shot on the other side. And he is awarded for his aggressiveness with two free throws here. Now JC's best friend, Tosi Tatsinko, has checked in for Zamboanga. First free throw is good for our reigning season MVP. JC is number six in the league and scoring at 15.3. Number three in steals, number seven in assists, and number three as well in field goal shooting percentage at 52%. Imagine that being in elite company with Robbie Celis and Balti Baltazar. 
Well, you know, he may not be crowned the MVP anymore this year, but he could take consolation in the fact that he still is the MVP for the Zamboanga Family's Brand Star Kings. You think he still has a good chance for Mythical 5 selection? Could be, but it's going to be close. 18-16, Pastoran misses. Rebound on Cinco. Wow, great chemistry with JC. And that's a breakaway layer. You know, had he got it that earlier, or if there was no defense trailing him from behind, that could have been a slam. I'm telling you. All right, because this is a lower ring in Bacoor. We did see a lot of dunks in the warm-ups. Three seconds to go. Alvin Aldai. That's a corner three-pointer. Yeah, Alwin may not be getting the minutes he's used to here with the strikers. It's been very erratic, his playing time for Bacoor City. But you could expect him to knock down shots like that at some points. It was a good start for James Cuecote, but the execution on offense for Zamboanga has really pushed them to play very well here in the opening frame. But Marky as usual, playing great for the strikers. I did ask him, do you have a switch? Because we're approaching the playoffs. And he said, no. Wala naman, consistent basketball lang. As he offers each and every performance of this to the Lord Almighty. The score is 20 to 19 after one. See the numbers for this season for Zamboanga and Bacoor. The most glaring for me here, Mix, is the points allowed by both squads. You have the first and the fifth best team in terms of defense this season in the Strikers and the Zamboanga Family's Grand Sardines. Look at that, 68 points per game allowed by the Bacoor City Strikers. Definitely a very remarkable feat. All right now, obviously, that pace hasn't been followed because the score is 20 to 19 after one. Tosi Tancinco on the signature pick and pop. Uh, how many years have these two played with each other? JC Marcelino and Tosi Tancinco. Their time with the LPU Pirates have really formed a great bond between those two. First quarter field goal shooting natin. 8 out of 15, 7 out of 15. Binagkakalayo as Chito Jaime misses. Rebound Tosi and here comes JC. Marcelino. The kick out to Caralipio. Couple of fakes. Up top to Tosi. 15 on the shot clock. There's a two-man game again. Great tap by Chito Jaime. Turnover isn't completed. What a scramble. Great effort by the players. Joseph Gavini is fouled. Little push shot right there. And Damaramito could not control his momentum moving forward. I hope everybody noticed the effort of Joseph Gabayni in that previous sequence. That's the point that we have been trying to make. He has been playing rejuvenated basketball. Obviously, his talent is there. He should be a dominant force already here in the MPBL. wonder what happened to him, but what's important is he seems to be back. Yeah, but again, makes it's all about the mentality para kay Gabayni. Maybe when he was with Bulacan, he was clouded with the thought that, you know, he should be treated a certain type of way and he should be able to get the calls on the floor just like a star player would. But here with Zamboanga, you know, that's a different case. And good for him to be able to bring himself back to the ground and try to build himself up in this rotation by Coach Louis Alas. And now he doesn't seem lost anymore. Yeah. Gavani just converted from the stripe. It's 24 to 19. 
Chito Jaime works with Jimboy Pastoran. There's the pressure defense from JB Marcelino forcing the turnover. <laughs> Jimboy Pastoran could not believe that there was no foul called. And that's the way our referees have been calling it. You know, a lot of physicality allowed in the backcourt. I wouldn't say it's quite the same though when our frontcourt players have been drawing contact. You think Jimboy has to get used to that, especially approaching the playoffs? Definitely, because he's going to face a lot of pressure, especially from teams who really love to put on intense backcourt pressure. And, you know, this is definitely one team that does it. Baseline inbound here off of the foul. It's David Lasco. On to Joseph Gabani. Now the ball is with JV. Marcelino escaping the defense of Pastoran. Tough layup, no basket. Look at Gabaini working so hard inside. Tosi Tansigo from downtown. Coach Louis mentioned in that report by Mika that Tosi is one of the important players he expects to set up outside of John Mahari because if you look at this Zamboanga roster, there are not really a lot of three-point specialists. Mm -hmm. It's only just Japs Bautista and Tosi Tansiko. So these two have to be able to really carry the production in terms of outside shooting. It's especially important for them because this is a team with a lot of great creators of the bounce. You have JC and JV Marcelino, and then you have Damien Lasco as well. My Judel Puentes Capa. So you have to be able to make it easier for them to get inside the lanes and one way to do that is by hitting the outside shot. I hope everybody remembers just how important Tosi Tansingo was last year in the finals for Zamboanga. He started in game number three, the only game that they won against FICA in the finals. JV Marcelino misfires. Who's ball foul? That's on Mark Yee. Oh, you see the way that Joseph Gabaini is competing. Possession in, possession out. He is going to battle it out on the glass. Look at that. He was coming from the other side. And yet he, his effort was able to award them with another possession off of that foul called against the strikers. And Marky is still livid about that call. He will have to sit down here. Mark Montuano has checked in for Bacoor. But it looks like Marky will return sometime soon. Ivan Ludovice is also now on the court. Defending JV. There's the escape. Lasco fakes. Drives and passes. Almost a turnover. One second on the shot clock. That's no good for Damien Lasco. Rebound to Mal, who was fouled. And it looks like there was supposed to be a 24-second shot clock violation first. They're going to have to review it. And I think the strikers also wanted a foul against Zamboanga because it looks like Nirmal was pushed in the air as he was trying to get that rebound. But if there was a 24-second shot clock violation, then there would be no foul, right? Yes. All right, so regardless, they get the basketball. It was very clear on that replay that you're seeing right now that Lasco still had the ball in his hands when the clock read zero. But so that's actually a lucky break for uh, De Santos, who was almost called for that foul. We go back to City's way, down by eight points. This is their 14th home court defense in the season. They've only lost one game against Kalookan. As Ivan Ludovice scores, he will have a three-point play opportunity. And if you're Zamboanga, having noted that, things, you wouldn't want to be able to wake up this crowd here. Baskets like that just ignite the energy coming from this crowd here at the strike gym. Those shots are big momentum shifters in a game that's hotly contested. 27-22 now. Jadel Fuentes working with Adi Santos. Off the two-man game. Dumapig in trouble. A lot of physicality on the court. 
Everybody's just staying tight for this defender. JV Marcelino. Mid range pull up. That short. Rebound D. There's a hold. The foul is on Chris Dumapik. Now, very clear that time that it was definitely the mapping who held on to Marquis e as they were battling for the rebound. I'm pretty sure that Marquis e would go berserk if that foul was called on him. He already has two fouls in this game. Obviously, he's going to have to be careful here. Seven minutes remaining in the second quarter. Again, Bakor has already secured that number one seed in the south. But to a lot of their players, especially the ones from Bacolo, this is their revenge against Zamboanga. As Montuano escapes and misses. The ball was loose. Great recovery by Damien Lasco. JV Marcelino. The pass to Judel. Fuentes pulls up and scores. It seemed nobody was ready to give up and receive a pass except for Judel Fuentes. That possession looked like it was going nowhere. To the vice, onto Nermal. Three-pointer is short. Rebound. Montuano, no foul there. Marquis, there's the follow. I give credit to Mark Montuano for making that play happen. Had it not been for his persistence under the boards, that shot by Marquis would not have been possible. Mr. Mapik seems to have gotten hurt. He asked for the sub immediately. So Gabaini has returned. I wonder what happened to Chris Dumapik. He's currently limping onto the Zamboanga bench. It seems there's a problem with that left leg. I'm not quite sure what it is, if it's the ankle or the knee. Or it could be even the hamstring. Nevertheless, we go back Zamboanga's way. They're up by five. JV Marcelino. Two screens up top. JV. Back to the left. Damon Lasco, his turn to attack. Lasco bumps in, basket and one. He may not have been showing this at a very consistent rate the entire season, but when given the chance, definitely you could expect that coming from Damon Lasco. We bring in this epic move of the game in partnership with Ogi Bet. Together we win the former All Star of Kalawakan last year. Coming alive for Zamboanga. Yeah, many people would say that how could you not stop that move? You already know he's going left. And especially with Damon, he's a guy who doesn't really have much of a right side. But being a right-handed defender going up against a left-handed guy, it's always much more difficult to be able to get in the way of the left-hander and try to stop their move. Here's Mark Gee. Three-pointer is short. Rebound Fuentes. The lead is eight for Zabuanga. Gabaini trying to seal. Instead, he gave up the pick. Wasn't used by Fuentes. Ball returned to Judel. He will pull up. In and out. Rebound. Scramble. Two people got hit. That's uh, Sudovice and Fuentes colliding. It looked to have been head to head on the collision. But the foul will be called against Ludovice. Let's look at that again. There was a lot of contact. Boom, yes, Ooh. they butted heads with each other. Now, the most important thing is that no one is bleeding. So no one has to be subbed out on a mandatory manner. It will be a baseline inbound for Zamboanga. Yeah, that's going to be too free. Yes. Yeah. Check that. Fuentes at the stripe. Last year, he was an all-star and a mythical five selection for the San Juan Knights. By the way, advance happy birthday to Matia Fuentes, Jadel's daughter. Shout out to Kay, his wife. And we just saw Kiefer Alas here in the venue. One of the best that the country can offer. Congratulations to him as well for his recent stint with our Gilas program. Time out, Tayo, 
back at the Strike Gymnasium for your OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. And I am joined by a very special guest, Assistant Coach Arnold Contorno of the Zamboanga's Family's Brand Sardines. Coach, nag-usap po tayo bago yung game, no? Napag-usapan natin yung mga plano nyo at isa doon, yung pagiging consistent sa pagiging mabilis para mahirap kayong habulin at mukhang ginagawa yan ng mga bata ngayon. Uh, kasi ginagawa sa practice yan, eh. Saka pinakandaan din namin itong game na ito. Eh, kasi gusto namin uh, mag-in ng elimination namin, mabuha namin yung panalo namin. Napag-usapan nyo yung uh, panalo sa elimination, Coach. Paano naman yung positioning at yung home court advantage para sa playoffs? Gano'n ka-importante yun para sa inyo? Siyempre, importante yun. Eh. Uh, maganda kasi kung makuha namin yung home court advantage. Eh. Lalo na na itong laro namin is para sa mga sambuang game nyo ito. Eh. Sa, sa sana ay makuha namin yung home court advantage para makita-kita tayo dyan sa sambuang game. Maraming salamat po, Coach Arnold Contorno. Balik sa inyo, Migs Happy. By the way, big shout out to Coach Arnold. He's come a long way. Obviously, he had to take over before Coach Louis even arrived. At some point, he was the interim head coach of Zamboanga. A lot of things have changed for the family's brand sardines. Sabi nga niya, itakit sa Zamboanga. Let's see if they can have home court advantage. But first, they're going to have to secure that number four seed in the South Division. Somewhere out there, the Quezon Huskers are watching as well before they defend their home court this coming Saturday. Ivan Ludovice will fire and miss. Offensive rebound, James Cuecote. One more chance for Paco Orr. Then on the shot clock. Screen up top, Ivan. Back to James, five seconds. Step back, three-pointer, short. The outside shot has not been very kind to the strikers here in the second quarter. Caralipio, Otto Mahari, John Mahari, nice looking layup right there. Went up there with so much confidence, he did not even hesitate to go for the shot. As soon as he attacked the closeout, he had his eyes set on attacking the basket. 36-24 now, 4 minutes and 23 remaining in the second. So the Vise, nice pass onto Margui. That's veteran experience for you, unrattled with the shot clock winding down. He knew that Marky was going to get open, and all he had to do was pretend to go for the shot. That's a badly needed basket by Bakoor. They have been outscored by nine points already here in this frame. Now there's a charge on JV Marcelino. That was an illegal screen set by JV as he tried to get the teammate open. Now JC will return. Same goes for Jammer Hamito. It's Hamito with Marquis, James Cuecute, John Narbal, and Ivan Ludovice on the floor. This is the excellent find by Ivan. That's veteran to veteran on to Marquis. You see there that jump pass allowing Marquis that open basket underneath past the defense. Assist story natin, 12 to 7 in favor of Zamboanga. We have an early evaluation already in terms of the offense of Zamboanga. Oh, it definitely is going very well para sa kanila. It's like a symphony playing great music in the orchestra. I love that analogy. As John Mahari got into it with Marquis, that's not an easy task. Looks like the foul was on him. It, despite Mark not being the most athletic that he was back in his day. Remember, rebounding is also a lot about intelligence and desire. Knowing where the ball will bounce off to and knowing where to position yourself and how to beat your man in getting the better spot on the floor. That time, Marky got the better of John Mahari. There's a pass inside off of the baseline. John Nermal, too strong from downtown. Forward pass. King Caralipio, down the middle, one-handed pull-up, is good. Transition defense was right there for the strikers, but because Caralipio has that push shot in his arsenal, he's able to rise above the defense without them having to try and block the shot. 38-26 now, Jander Mal, three-pointer, too strong, rebound Mahari. And Zamboanga will continue to run. No numbers though, Fuentes on the double cross. He needs a teammate. Tough cross court onto JC. Steal. Cuecote is fouled. Good hands by James to be able to come up with that steal. That was a very clean swipe. 
against one of the Marcelino twins. See what happened here. Normally, it's JC Marcelino who gets those swipes, but then again, he's tied in the statistics with James Quecote. They're at number three in the league in steals per game, averaging two per outing. Now, Quecote will proceed to the strike. Uh, these are one of the facets of the game that James continues to try and prove himself. He wants to be able to be known as a two-way player, but at the same time, a guy who also, in the future, could be a leader for his squad. And who better to learn from than Marky? Marky might just be the best leader that the MPBL has to offer. Any current or former teammate of his, you ask them or him about Marky, you can only get positive things. It starts with the influence that he brings on your life, not just on the floor. Yes. You know, the way that you take care of your body, the food that you take in, and the way that you condition yourself as well. Even when you're injured, by the way, he will require you to do some poor exercises. Tatsinko with a kick out. Carilipio fakes. One more pass. Nice offensive execution by Zamboanga. That's three-pointer number three now in the game for Tatsinko. He's been playing very well here in getting those bailout passes from his teammates. I'm sure. As per Mika Abisamis' report, Coach Louis Alas is very happy with the production of his role player. Seven on the shot clock. Nermal leans in. No foul there. Rebound Marquis. No put back as well. Ball is loose and recovered by Zamboanga. Well, you compare what Bacor has been running here to Zamboanga. There have been a lot of rust and impatient moments for the strikers. As compared to Zamboanga who has been very patient in their execution and really trying to run every single movement to the dot. Now, we've talked about this as a non betting game for Bako Or. Although, there is a bit of a revenge factor for them, especially those who came from Bakolod. And of course, they want some momentum coming into the playoffs. On the other hand, for Zamboanga, yes, the major thing is home court advantage. But we did also talk about the importance of this game as a momentum builder for the Zamboanga family's brand sardines. This might just be their statement come the playoffs because if they beat Bako Or on the road, this might be their preview of the second round. That's correct. And this also, we mentioned this in the pregame mix, this also caps off what has been a stellar run for them out of the FIBA World Cup break. 43-28 now. Alwin Aldai will drive. Almost a turnover. Ball recovered by Hamito. He still couldn't score. That's three sorry misses for Jammer. Now he will proceed to the stripe. And yet, no other Zamboanga player was able to get that basketball away from him. He was just right there, miss after miss, getting it for himself. And now he's at the line for two shots. One of our dear friends from Zamboanga. Just messaged us is Bosnini Arquiza. Let's just greet his wife, Nasi Jenilin Julian. A happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday po sa inyo, madam. Also to Parillagas and the rest of the Paranaque Patriots that are watching right now. By the way, Paranaque will be the opponent of Quezon this coming Saturday back down south. Here's JC Marcelino. A minute and 42 remaining before halftime. Bench scoring natin 23 to 10 as JC misses. Rebound Hamito. No surprising ni si JC pa nga amin na malas dito para sa Zabuaga. But all the other guys have been able to contribute in terms of points. Chamber Hamito though, wanting to do so para sa strikers. It's a big time three pointer coming from Jammer himself. Seven points from the big guy. 43 33. Jodel Fuentes up top. He drives, lefty layup, yes. And Fuentes really looking very much comfortable now in the system of Coach Louis Alas. Doesn't have to do so much to be able to contribute 
as long as he sticks to the role given to him, he's definitely going to be able to make an impact. Jadel is in double figures now. Out that pass. JC to his best friend. Good recovery by Alvin Aldai. Under 40 seconds before halftime. Oh, that's not a good pass coming from Daniel Villoria. Cold and fresh off the bench, thrust into a high-speed situation right away. Green and Veloria just missing the mark on that feed. That prompts a timeout to be called. It's a 12-point lead for Zamboanga. We're back inside the strike gym in Bahor, Cavite in what might be a preview of the second round of the MPBL South Division playoffs. Bahor is the number one seeded team in the South. We have secured that already. Zamboanga might be number four or number five depending on the outcome of this game and Quezon's outing this coming Saturday. As we take a look at our VIP, Satar Makantal, Kenneth Doremdes, Emre Oreta, and Rudy Distrito at the sidelines. This is Mix Gomez alongside Javi Palanya and Mika Abisamis. The score reads 45 to 33 with 35 seconds remaining before halftime. Adi Santos and company looking good here. Press break. To Del Fuentes. 15 on the shot clock. Now they go to Joseph Gabani against Lester Reyes on his first appearance in this game. Six on the shot clock. Caralipio to Fuentes at the corner. That's a three. Backbreaker right there by Zamboanga. Out of the timeout. Ran to perfection by the family's brand sardines. Excellent relocation by Jadel Fuentes for the open spot. Down to two seconds. Heruta misfires and that will do it for our first two quarters here in Bacoor. Boy, the strikers is home record is now at stake. They've only lost once here against Kaloha. Right now, it's Zamboanga who is looking a lot better. Oh, the family's brand sardines playing with a lot of heart and with a lot of patience as well. You mentioned to me how their offense has really taken a big shift in the takeover of Coach Luis Olas and Trastatsiko has shown us that he has benefited from just that. Amiga did talk about Tosi Tansiko and John Bahari as two crucial role players off the bench for Zamboanga. Great for Tosi to have come alive in this game. 48 to 33 at halftime.
back at the Strike Gymnasium for your OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. My name is Mika Abisamis, and right now I am joined by two very special guests. Kiefer Alas, of course, of the Batangilas Under-16 team, and of course, Sir Dennis Abelia, the team owner of the Bacoor City Strikers. Good evening, Kiefer. Thank you for joining us here. Kwento mo naman sa akin yung naging experience mo sa Qatar. Uh, super fun experience po. Uh, thankful lang kami kasi uh, we made history. Nakakualify kami for the World Cup. At alam ko, naging malaking bagay dyan ang iyong daddy. Nakita namin sa social media. Tell me more about that. Uh, wala po. He's just there to guide me every day. So, worth it naman yung ano. Mag magiging galit siya sa akin. So, worth it naman sa experience. Okay, at alam ko, nandito ka rin for Zamboanga. Anong gusto mo sabihin sa fans ng Zamboanga? Uh, thank you to the Zamboanga fans sa support. Uh, continue to support Zamboanga now until the playoffs po. Maraming salamat, Kiefer Alas. Hi, Sir Dennis. Um, going to the playoffs, I'm sure maraming paghahanda, no, sir? Ano po yung pinaka-importante para sa inyo? Well, syempre, uh, itong playoffs na to, it's a different ball game for us. So, ngayon, ang lagi naming pinagandaan yung iwas injury sa mga players natin dahil, syempre, halos sa uh, 10 months, uh, ilang months na tayo sa regular season at nandun na rin yung uh, uh, mga stress sa mga players natin. So, yun, talaga, ang uh, number one namin na sana uh, makapasok tayo sa playoffs ng... Uh, ng uh, yung mga injury maiwasan katulad si Mike Canyete ngayon yung ating uh, strikers ay injured sana makabalik siya before the playoffs Tama yan sir, importante talaga sa lahat ang health ng ating players Sir, meron po ba kayong mga gustong batiin at pasalamatan? Uh, una, binabati ko ang ating uh, mahal na alkalde si Mayor Strike B. Revilla na laging nakasuporta sa atin dito sa Strikers, Bacor City Strikers ang kanyang asawa, si Ma'am Shea Cabal Revilla, si Rob Revilla, at si Baby Shelly, at saka siyempre sa girlfriend ni Rob. Ang ating major sponsor, si Philbet.com, Almacar Construction, RKF Builders, Arkinil Tavo, Cap RR Laxon, City Advertising, Debandan Sports, MWL, 24 Alkaline C, ang aking pamilya, Adrian, Patty, Kirsten, Ezra, and Enzo. At syempre, ang aking pinakamahal, si Liza and their family, si paring Bobby Bautista, si paring Edwin and Malu, uh, Comerino, si Attorney Jack Coterio, at saka syempre si Jeff and Lawrence. Maraming salamat po, Sir Dennis Abelia of the Bacoor City Strikers. Ngayon naman, mga kaliga, ang paborito niyong segment kung saan kayo pwede magpadala ng inyong mga comments and suggestions dyan lang sa ating MPBL shoutouts. At alam ko ngayon, meron tayong tatlong nagbigay ng shoutouts sa tingin ko nga yung iba nandito sa loob ng Bacoor City Strikers. So kung nandito kayo at narinig niyo yung pangalan niyo, pakitawag niyo lang ako. At eto na nga, ang una nating Shout out ay galing kay Jordan Ledesma off to our last fight before playoffs. Go, go, Bacoor City Strikers, defend our home court. Nandito ka ba sa loob, Jordan? Magpakita ka naman sa akin. At eto na si Eya Rico, tiwala lang sa itaas. Kaya yan, Z fans. Siguradong malaking fan ito ng Zamboanga. At eto naman si Jeffrey Arlanza, good luck, Bacoor City Strikers, beat Zamboanga. At yan na nga ang gusto ng maraming fans dito sa loob ng Strike Dimnasium na talagang matalo ng Bacoor ang Zanbuanga. At kung meron pa kayong mga gustong ipadala ng mga shoutouts and suggestions, huwag niyo pong kalimutan na ibigay dyan sa aming MPBL Facebook account. Magbabalik po ang OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. Thank you. 
It is halftime here in Bacoor for the Strikers defending their home court against the Zamboanga family's brand, Sardines. And boy, what a start that was for Zamboanga. Now they have a 15-point lead after two quarters of play. Javi, tell us the difference. It was actually tighter in the first quarter, but the second period was really the difference maker for the Strikers and the family's brand, Sardines Zamboanga. Outscored Bacoor City 28-14 in that second quarter. As you look at the numbers here of both squads after the first 20 minutes of action, 56% from the field for Zamboanga. And that's just a testament to how well they've been running their offense here in the first half. They've been going to the line a lot. You owe that to the aggressiveness that their drivers have exhibited here in this game. 15 assists as well and 20 inside points. Those are very crucial stat departments where Zamboanga has really been able to capitalize on. And the strikers have found it hard to run their offense. A lot of rushed shots and impatient opportunities para sa kanila. So they'll have to be able to settle down more in the second half if they want to be able to make this game more competitive. Boy, has the damage come from everywhere for the Zamboanga family's brand sardine. Jadel Puentes leads the way with 13, followed by Tosi Tancinco who hit three three-pointers in the first half. Adi Santos has six, and King Caralipio has four as well. Again, a lot of things have changed for Zamboanga all throughout the FIBA World Cup break, the coaching change, and of course, the All-Star break. As you take a look at the leading scorers of Bacoor, it's James Wekute with nine, Marquis and Jammer Hamito combined for 14. Then Alvin Alday has three points. Wekute will begin the second half with Aaron Hiruta, Jan Derpal, Marquis, and Jamo Egilos. As for Zamboanga, we have JC Marcelino, JV Marcelino, Jodel Fuentes, King Caralipio, and Joseph Cabaini. Teruta trying to post up against the MVP. Good defense by JC. And that's a turnover. Uh, JC has always been known to be a remarkable defender. When you post up against him, he has that ability to be able to push you out and get you off balance. That's exactly what happened against Teruta. Carilipio misfires. Here comes James Quecute, the leading scorer of Bacoor, bumping his way through, and he was fouled. Opetes readily acknowledging that, but if you ask me, there shouldn't have been a whistle on that call, on that play, rather. Quecute is at the stripe for two gimmies. He's now three out of four from the free throw line so far. Now in double figures for Bacoor. We saw the leading scorers earlier at the half here for the strikers. One guy who has been noticeably absent is John Elmal. Right. After having so much hype in the All-Star Day, and also he got drafted. He was the highest MPBL draftee, right? That's correct. One of the first in the second round. 48-35, JC Marcelino onto King Caralipio. His three-pointer is good. He has improved that outside shot considerably. That was one facet of his game that many pundits were saying that he did not have. But obviously, now moving on to the pros, and playing between the three and four spots, he would have to possess that. This three-point shot is brought to you by Extreme One Stop Shop Appliances. Boy, has he had his moments already in the season for Zamboanga after being finals MVP for Letran. That's correct. Jander Mal looking for his first points. He will proceed to the stripe. I don't know about that. Caralipe was going straight up, but Nermal had just enough hang time to be able to catch a body up top. King Caralipio, by the way, had to defend Mark Yee and Jander Mal in that sequence. Termal now finally is on board. That's his first point on his first appearance at the stripe. Imagine being scoreless in the first half. One of their, your leading guys in terms of points produced this season. Doon pa lang makikita mo na kung anong mali para sa strikers. He's just point one away in tying the scoring output of their lead scorer, James Cuecote. It's been that kind of a campaign so far for John Nepal. JC brings down the ball. 
being defended by his co-all-star, John Nanval. Screen to the left. Here's Caralipio against Marquee. Step back. Eight on the shot clock. JC. Down to five seconds. His three-pointer. In and out. Rebound quick with day. Jane surveys. He passes to the middle. Swing to the right. The drive by Nerbal. No good. Rebound, Marquis. Still no good on the putback. Well, they're covered now by Jamo Aguilos. Cuecute catches and fires. Too strong. And that's a hold. That's not going to count. It's a foul committed by Joseph Gabaini. Well, he looked like he was quite fed up with the pace that was happening in that possession for the strikers, and he wanted everything to just slow down. Now, Dumapik is back, replacing Joseph Gabaini. Remember, he hurt himself in the first half on a rebounding sequence. This is his first appearance back. Aaron Heruta on to Mark Yee against King Caralipio. He turns around, one-hander, off to the left. Aguilos with the putback, basket and one. He's going to be very big here for the strikers, especially with the experience that he's had throughout his career. And we know that Jemo Aguilos still has a lot left in his stack. It's just the injuries that have been bothering him for the past couple of years that has pre prevented him from showing out on the floor. Last year, he played for Zamboanga. Yes. This is a guy who has seen the finals time and time again already in the MBBL, having played for Batangas in Zamboanga. Rudel Fuentes zigzagging. There's the pass to Paralipio. His three pointer is short. Rebound Cuecote. Bacor is down by 12. Well, if Bacor is going to play the percentages here, they're going to allow that three point shot by Paralipio continuously. Oh, what a block by JC. Great anticipation of the shot by Nermal. Counter steal. Cuecute on the run. He goes to Jan. Nermal will lay that ball up. Great job to hide that basketball away from the prying hands of Jodel Puentes. 51 41. Two screens up top. JC Marcelino. Pinapalabas to JV. Now the ball is with Jodel Puentes. On the spin in the pass, JV, one more feed. Good cut by JC Marcelino. Well, you saw how they did not force the issue. Three scorers touching the basketball, and yet they were very determined to get it to the best option. You go back to John Nermal. Height advantage, no basket. JV pushing it. Marcelino. Surveying, driving, two plus one. What a layup by JV Marcelino. There's just this cloud of unpredictability that Zamboanga is playing with right now in this game. Bringing us this epic move of the game in partnership with Okay Ben. Together we win. It's the sense of urgency to get revenge. Oh, sorry, that's actually for Bahor. This is a sense of urgency for home court advantage in the South Division. Just imagine that. Last year, Zamboanga was number one in the South. They had home court advantage all throughout the playoffs except the finals. They might actually not go back to Zamboanga anymore if they lose this game. Fifty-six, forty-one, six minutes and 19. In the third, to the vice, to Aguilos. Now the ball is with James Cuecute against Judel Fuentes. Ten on the shot clock. Jan Nermal. Ooh, now that's a foul. Three free throws for Jan. Close call right there. The Zamboanga bench wants Coach Louis Alas to try and challenge that, but I don't think Coach Louis will decide on doing just that. It's too late now. As Nermal proceeds to the stripe. First free throw is no good. In and out. This guy has gotten so much trust from Coach Alex Angeles. He replaced Michael Cañete as the all-star starter for the South Division because Cañete 
has been out due to a knee injury. But Bacoor did say that he will be back for the playoffs. Dermal led the way in scoring in the opening quarter for the South Division when they were being manhandled by Balti Baltazar and company. That's two out of three from the strike. Six points for Jan. Four minutes of change gone by in the third. Fuentes, his three-pointer. In and out. Ball tapped by Nermal. Possession for Zamboanga. The family's brand sardines continue to look very sharp offensively here. Baseline inbound for J.D. Marcelino. Now the ball is with J.C. There's the drive. No basket. So the Vise calls down the play. John Nermal to Marquis. Shot clock at 10. There's the high low. Great push by Egilos. And he finishes. Those are the types of plays that Bacoor failed to do in the first half. You see a lot of the patience they exhibited in that play. They really waited for Egilos, particularly Marky. He waited for Egilos to be open inside the shaded area and he made the right pass. That's a screen. It's a charge on Cristo Mapic. And interestingly enough, para dito sa Zambanga, right after they say that they continue to remain sharp offensively, they commit two turnovers. This was that high-low play, Dumapik was wrong to front itong si Jamo Egilos because for Zambanga, there was no other help defender at the backside to prevent that shot. JV Marcelino was absolutely too late on the help. 56-45, John Dermal on to Marquis. Again, there's Egilos. It was open for a while. Now Bahari is defending Cuecote. Nice matchup. James in trouble. Great defense by Bahari. Now there's a foul. It's on John. Very poor decision right there by Bahari. He already had Etosi James Cuecote in handcuffs. And James was already feeling that pressure coming from Mahari. But John was just really too aggressive with those hands getting in the way of what could have been a great defensive stop. First free throw is good for James Kwekute. He has 12 points to lead the way for Bakoori in this outing so far. He is, after all, their leading scorer in this season. Five rebounds as well. That's a second miss from the strike. The lead is 10, forward pass. Ooh. Just a bit too long for Adi Santos. But he definitely had the right intention there. So, mistake after mistake coming here for the family's brand sardines in the past few possessions. They're going to have to uh, regain their bearings here on this defensive possession. We go back to Marquis up top. There's the high-low again. Tough catch by Egilos. Nine on the shot clock. Ludovice driving. No foul there. Ball recovered by Tancinco. And he was fouled by Egilos. A lot of bodies flying, crashing to the floor. When that ball gets loose, even if this game doesn't really have a lot of bearing, you still see players putting everything on the floor. Obviously, Zamboanga needs to win this one to try and secure home advantage but for the Bacor City strikers they could just relax and let their bench players play out this one and like coach Ardol Contorno mentioned in his interview with Mika earlier they prepared well for this game and di nila hahayaan na mawala to here's JC Marcelino on the Tosi Tancinco his three pointer is way off very uncharacteristic as he already has three threes in this game. We go back with Ivan Ludovice against Judel Fuentes. Ivan to Chito Jaime. Nice setup. Straight away, three pointer. <laughs> There's another guy who played for Zapuanga last year. 
and I'm sure there is added motivation for him to try and deliver a win here for the strikers against his former squad. That's the problem when you're going up against the strikers. You think you've solved the problem by stopping the first few guys on the floor, but then you have guys like Chito Jaime still coming off the bench, and then the problem continues to arise. Puentes got fouled on the other end by Ivan Ludovice on a very tough closeout. And so Judel is at the strike, just made his first one. Puentes was highly recruited by Zamboanga in the offseason, obviously to help out with the scoring load, with the shooting load for the family's brand Sardines. Remember, Zamboanga, they were the preseason champions, defeating Nueva Isia in Jensen. Walang pa or no? Yeah, they weren't there. 58-49, Ivan Ludovice. Three minutes and 30. Too aggressive there was JV Marcelino. And that's free throws for Ivan. Yeah, that's the problem if you're Zabuanga. You have to be able to control yourselves and make sure you get to defend without throwing fouls. Because now you're in the penalty. Three minutes and 30 still remaining in the third quarter. Every time you commit a foul, you put someone on the line and that gives Bacoor City a chance to score points without the clock moving. First free throw for Ivan is no good. He's now one out of two from the stripe. Four points for Ivan Ludovice. He used to play for Davao and Pasay before. There's a lot of chemistry between him and Marquis already. Ball out of bounds, a baseline inbound here for Zamboanga as Decoy Lopez checks in. Again, a testament to the depth of Bacoor. That's the first appearance in the game for Decoy. Also playing against his former team. It's Lopez, Jaime, and Eguilos, former Zamboanga players. Mahari misfires. Cuecute, no forward pass. James of the Joe and Lee U. There's the trailer. Decoy Lopez for three. Bombs away. That's the difficult part about the big men of the strikers. Yes. They're very good inside, but these are guys who are very capable of hitting the outside shot, especially in trailing plays. That time, it was Decoy Lopez, earlier Tito Jaime. So two former Zamboanga players putting in the damage from the outside for Bacor City. The lead is just five here, 58 to 53, three minutes remaining in the third quarter. the strike gymnasium for your OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League and right now I am joined by Coach RB Mangahas of the Bacoor City Strikers. Coach, although humahabol na kayo sa quarter na ito, no, halos lahat ng ipasok ni Coach Louie nagiging effective. Were you actually prepared for this? Inasahan nyo ba ito? Oo oh, naman ma'am. Siyempre, alam naman namin yung capability ng Sambuanga kaya ready kami dyan. So yun nga lang, meron talagang adjustment na mangyayari. Hopefully, yun, na out hustle kasi kami ng umpisa eh. Hopefully, ito na, nakakabalik na kami. Siyempre, defense pa rin yung, yung priority namin para makuha namin yung game. At coach, although safe na safe na kayo sa inyong spot sa standings, no, ano pong gusto nyo sabihin sa mga fans ng Bacoor na tuluyang sumusuporta sa inyo? Siyempre, um, taos puso kami nagpapasalamat sa lahat ng mga taga Bacoor. No? Siyempre, lagi silang nandyan. Whatever happened, ups and down, nandyan sila. Even sa practice, nakikita namin sila nandito. Sumusuporta pa rin. So, thank you sa lahat ng mga taga Bacoor. Supportahan nyo pa rin kami, whatever happened. Tsaka was, sana, mas dumami pa rin kayo pagdating ng playoffs. Yan lang po. Maraming salamat, Coach RB mga has of the Bacoor City Strikers. Makes happy. I have to say, I'm loving these assistant coaches' interviews by our courtside reporters. In fairness, sa kanila, Javi, magaling sila sumagot. Oh, yeah. Parang sanay na sanay nga eh. Oo. And so, hustle is key, defense is key for Bacoor here in the second half. Have you been seeing 
better effort coming from them here? Oh yeah, definitely. And also better execution offensively. I mentioned that they were very impatient in the first half. Now they've tried to really run their offense late into their shot clock and see what happens. Nice block by Joey Lee Yu. That was tough. Defending the three on two. Lee Yu passes on to Jaime. The fake and the leaner. Chito scores and the lead is down to three. That's why you gotta be wary of these guys because they are able to deliver instantly para dito sa strikers. Chito Jaime, it doesn't take much for him to warm up. The biggest lead was 16 points. No good on the three-pointer for Caralipio. He gets the ball back, this time from the corner, that's short. Great effort by John Mahari. Now he scores for two. Caralipio continues to try from the outside. Numerous misses already. After that make earlier to begin this quarter, it has not been falling down from him. Meanwhile, for Chito Jaime, it has been a perfect shooting day so far para sa kanya. That three-pointer came from the same spot where he reached 1,000 points in the MPBL. 60 to 58, Joseph Gabaini will answer back. Well, Gabaini will be very crucial here for Zamboanga in trying to weather the storm being shown here by the Bacora City strikers, but he'll have to keep himself out of foul trouble. Zabanga has not done a very good job of that. So Dovise drives, there's the kick out. Couple of swings, Cuecute. He attacks baseline. Good tap by Caballero. Bacor will keep possession with five remaining on their shot clock. But there you see the difference. In the first half, seldom or even, I, I don't know if they were able to do it, if they were able to get Zamboanga City into a scramble defensively with those skip passes, they continue to be on a roll here. That's 11 points now. On only nine minutes of play for Chito Jaime. He's been that efficient. But boy, Zamboanga continues to have answers. Well, they needed that basket. Coach Louis Alas, as soon as this run was starting, plucked JC Marcelino out of that Zamboanga bench to try and restore order here for the family's brand sardines. 64-61, Chito Jaime back at it again. Seven on the shot clock. They go to Decoy Lopez. He already hit the three a while ago. Kick out to Davise. He was fouled. That's three free throws for Ivan Davise. That's the second time this quarter that a Zamboanga player has crashed into a three-point shooter of the Bacoor City strikers. Earlier, it was Jan Armal who was fouled. This time, it's Ivan Ludovice. And on the same play, it was JC Marcelino. First free throw is good for Ivan Ludovice. He's now up to five points. Two more at the stripe with a chance to tie. This free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kumpletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Bacoor started this quarter down by 15. And they trailed by as many as 16. Now the ball game is tied at 64 with 11 seconds to go in the third. Damon Lasco has checked in. Here's Jadel Fuentes. Seven seconds, screen by Gavani. Fuentes will pull up, no bounce, two seconds, scramble for the loose ball and that will do it. The perfect ending to this wild ride in the third quarter. Folks, we are back to square one. Hold on to your seats ladies and gentlemen, because it is getting raucous out here at the strike gym. The score after three is 64 all in what might be a preview of the second round of your South Division playoffs.
There you see our player matchup. It's Joseph Gabaini versus Mark Yee. Your thoughts about that, Navi? Uh, both of these guys really have been putting all of their efforts and energy defensively and also on the glass, but not really much numbers in the stat sheet para sa pareho, but you can see their impact on the floor. Each time Joseph Gabaini is able to bring in the energy, is a plays place well. Each time Mark Yee is on the floor, Bacor City also has its moments. So it's going to be up to these two guys to play the X factors here in the fourth quarter. Which big guy will be able to sustain this kind of play all throughout the final buzzer? Gabaini will begin the fourth frame on the court. Marky is at the bench. But boy, the lineup of Bacoor ending the third frame was highly effective. They made four three-pointers in the third quarter and 11 free throws as well. Steering their comeback after being down by 15 at halftime. We are tied at 64 all beginning the fourth and final frame. Thank you for joining us. This is Mix Gomez alongside Javi Palanya and Mika Visavis. Look at that third quarter turnaround by the Bacor City Strikers. The only team to be able to break the 30-point barrier in this game. 31 in that third quarter after they let Zamboanga go out for 48 points in the first half. Well, this is what usually happens when we have our games in Bacoor. The Strikers have only lost once in this venue. That's to Batang Kankalu early in the season. They have 12 wins already at home as the team who has hosted the most games here in the fifth season of our league. Well, they've had a lot of games where they had to come from behind in Bacoor City, especially here. Sideline inbound for Joel Liu, working with Ivan Ludovice, Decoy Lopez, Chito Jaime, and James Cuecute. Jaime for three! That's the fourth three-pointer of Chito Jaime in this game. He has almost single-handedly turned this game around para dito sa kanyang kumpunan. But you gotta give credit to his teammates for locating him on those open shots. Wow, what an answer by Joseph Gabaini against three defenders. He was able to dominate through. And you see the body language as well, Mix. You didn't see that a lot from Joseph early in his stint for Zamboanga. But right now, he really seems to be locked in. Back into celebratory moments when he makes big plays. But oh my goodness, how can you not celebrate the play of Chito Jaime in this game? This might just be a bit of a revenge game itself for Chito Jaime. As he's going up against his former squad. Free throw missed by Gabaini. Zamboanga is now 13 out of 17 from the stripe. Here's Kwekute against two defenders. Two free throws for James. It's been difficult for other Zamboanga players to stay in front of James Kwekute in this game. He's had his way most of the time. The only guy that has been really successful in guarding Kwekute in this game has been John Mahali. This free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. 13 points now in this game for James Kwekute with six rebounds and a dime to his name. Second free throw is good. 69-66. A three-point lead for the leaders of the South Division. Bahor has already secured the number one spot in their division while Zamboanga is battling for home court advantage ahead of the Quezon Huskers. Gabaini posting up, turning around. Sorry miss, but there's the put back for Joseph. The double arrived, but he was able to fake it out. And because of that, nobody was there to call her the off defensive rebound para the strikers leaving Gabaini open once again for a putback. Good defense by Damien Lasco. He will escape. That's basket and one for Damien Lasco. The Strikers shouldn't be complacent here, especially at this point. They know how Zamboanga can really keep its step with any opponent. Their depth has shown that whoever is on the floor can deliver, especially that guy, Damien Lasco. He's a proven scorer here in this league. And now playing for a great coach in Luya Las, you know that his confidence 
has only increased right now para sa Zamboanga. Here's the bonus for Damien Lasco. He converts. It's 71-69. Zamboanga ahead. Jamo Aguilos and Jan Nerbal are back for Boko Or. Joining Joel Liu, Chito Jaime, and Ivan Ludovice. Screen up top. There's the pass to Chito. The top scorer for Buckle Orr with his fifth three-pointer, and it's basket and one. Oh, my goodness. We are running out of words to describe just how magical the play of Chito Jaime has been in this game. Absolutely magnificent. He has not yet missed here in the second half. Basket and one opportunity, another three-pointer coming from Chito Jaime. And now a chance for one more for a four-point play, a rare one. Five threes, and that's after shooting the ball zero out of three in the first half. He missed from the stripe. Bahor is up by one. They go back with the MVP. JC passes on to Gabaini. Joseph now on to Judel Fuentes. Gabaini back at it again. He is fouled. Bacoor has struggled to defend that particular set by Zamboanga. He had Gabaini coming off of a pin down and then going into a shallow cut, receiving the ball into the post. He didn't have to ask for it as if he was sealing. He went straight into his move and that's where the difficulty arises for Bacoor City. They have they couldn't stop the brute force that is Joseph Gabaini. Here comes the big guy. Obviously, those types of moves weren't even present to our eyes in his first appearance for Zamboanga. To my memory, he started showing us his dominance in that game versus San Juan. That happened inside the Phil Oil Echo Oil Center. Now he continues to be on the rise. Second free throw, no good. We're tied at 72. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Ludovicic working with Jammer Hamito. Ivan taking his time. Grease screen, seven on the shot clock. Ludovicic, no foul there. Double teamed, turnover. Now Fuentes surveys. Jadel will stop and pop. Three pointer is good. Now we've seen a lot of transition threes in this game, especially from Judel Fuentes. But that time he saw that the opportunity was presented to him. Ludovice was backtracking and it was just too late for him to recover and effectively challenge that shot of Judel Fuentes. Boy, this game is such a delight to witness. The back and forth in the fourth quarter. Now Zamboanga has regained the lead, Presenting our Suzuki muscular and sporty fans of the game, just like the Avenis, do more and achieve more with the muscular and sporty scooter from Suzuki. The Avenis, oras na para magmotor. Now we do thank you for joining us as we are inside the Strike Gymnasium in Bacoor, Cavite. Tomorrow we will head back to Palayan City, Nueva Ecija. Rice Vanguards will take on Pase, but before that, it's Jensen versus Batangas. As we take a look at the numbers of Judel Fuentes versus Pasig City. 15 points on 50% shooting para kay Fuentes in that game. Here tonight, he has surpassed those numbers with 80 points. Perfect from the line along with his five rebounds. You know, one thing that Coach Louis has also made do with Zamboanga as soon as he took over a few games in is you don't really need any more 
one of the Marcelino twins or Judel Fuentes on the floor. He has got stretches where it has been a lot of just role players para sa kanila. And that's a testament to how well they're running the system. So Buang is up, 75-72. Chito Jaime, he continues to be hot here in Bahor. Alam mo, hindi ka naman tinatanong ka parate. Pero ano kaya nakain ni Chito Jaime? That's six three-pointers and 20 points for the former Zamboanga player. Tosi Tancinco, he was bothered. Up top to Jadel. Three-pointer, no answer. Rebound, great effort on the floor. That's Heruta, joined by a couple more players. Jammer Hamito, Tosi Tancinco, and JC Marcelino all on the floor. That's MPBL basketball for you, ladies and gentlemen. You just love the physicality as well as the desire and commitment of each and every player from these two squads to really dive for those 50-50s. Even our reigning MVP, you see him there on the floor. So it doesn't matter what your stature is in this league. Magpapakamatay ka para sa bola. Here's the three-pointer, the sixth three-pointer. All in the second half for Chito Jaime. He was scoreless by halftime. Now he has 20. Let's see what else he can do. Aaron Hiruta working with Jammer Hamito. Aaron drives. Eight on the shot clock. Jan Herbal bothered by Damien Lasco. They go to Hamito. Short stab, way off. Tied at 75. They go back to Buanga's way. Jadel Fuentes. Against Cuecute. Fuentes on to Lasco. Now they go to Gabaini against Jammer Hamito. Joseph Gabaini on to Paralipio. Back to Joseph. Gabaini misses. Rebound, JC. How about the MVP? He just snatched it from behind over the back of Aaron Heruta. Another great all around game by JC. Not eye popping numbers, but filling the stat sheet once again. That's 10 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists for J.C. Marcelino. And you have to love his adjustment as well for Zamboanga, recognizing his uh, presence as a role player from time to time as well. What a way for you to lead by example, itong si J.C. Aaron Heruta, nice bounce. There's the help, foul given up by Jadel Fuentes. But they had no choice. It was Fuentes who was in front of him, and that could have been a dunk para kay Jammer Hamito, which could have ignited the crowd here at the strike gym. And if you're Zamboanga, you definitely would not want that, especially in the stage of the game where it has been nipped and tucked for both of these teams. By the way, that's the fourth foul of Jadel Fuentes, so he has to stay careful. Coach Alex Angeles and company hoping for another conversion from Jammer Hamito. He had to step in because Jamo Egilos has now fouled out of this game. 77 all, 5 minutes and 12. Fuentes working with JC, King Caralipio, Joseph Gabaini, and John Mahari. Fuentes back to Gabaini. He could not score. Rebound to Heruta. Eight on surveys. He drives. Eight on Heruta feeds. And that's off of Jammer Hamito. Good job by Gabaini to still try and sprint back down. He was quite behind the play. But despite that, he still ran the length of the floor and just in time to break off that offensive set by the strikers. We have had nine deadlocks and six lead changes in this game. Remember, at some point, Bahor trailed by as many as 16. But because of the heroics of Chito Jaime, they're back in this game. Miss from JC, rebound Gabaini. Joseph taking his time, and he was hacked. Oh, he just had all the confidence in the world, knowing that he would be able to assert his dominance. There he is after getting the ball. He had Amito in front of him, Nermal on the side. But he knew fully well that he was able to get, to get at least a foul. 
out of that situation. Now we started thinking about this during the All-Star game because we saw the matchup itself. But if you want to talk about dominant big men in the whole of the MPB, obviously Balti Baltazar will be at the top of that list. But do you think Joseph Gabaini is now the number two guy? Oh, he's on the way, definitely. I just feel like he has to continue to show it on a consistent basis. 79-77, J.B. Marcelino has returned. Chito Jaime working with Ivan Ludovice. Ludovice, by the way, has had the bulk of the minutes being the point guard of Bahor in the second half. Chito Jaime, another three. No good. Ball tapped, no conversion. And here comes the MVP. JC Marcelino, defended by Jan Dermal. 12 on the shot clock. Four minutes remaining. Screen by King Caralipio. JC goes left. There's the help. No foul. Caralipio onto JV for three. And that's good. Excellent swing of the basketball. Yeah, two-man game involving JC and King Caralipio on the pop. King recognizing the open shooter on the right side. And that's money for JV. 82-77, Zamboanga by five. Chito Jaime, hounded by Caralipio, top three-pointer. Now the referee just blew his whistle. Will this be an unsportsmanlike foul? Well, let's see on the replay. Oh, there's blood it's right <laughs> below the eye of Chito Jaime. Uh, uh, did I just see that correctly? I don't even want to narrate it anymore to <laughs> our viewers out there. You can just press on the rewind. Now, it could have been on the fall for Chito Jaime. I don't think it should be a landing spot. At best, it would have been a personal foul because... Ooh, it is it an is unspoke. sportsman-like foul. I'd love to see the replay on that one. Carilipio is still trying to plead his case. Yeah, because he was stationary, he had his hand up, didn't really lean in or move any of his body parts forward. You see here, Ayun, it was the foot. It was the foot. That left foot that he left under the landing spot of Chito Jaime. So everything else was good defense except for where he placed his foot. So that was the boo-boo by King Caralipio. Well, it wasn't the worst of closeouts. And he talked about this all season though. We do really have shooters who have that natural tendency to have a bit of a kick with their shooting motion. Ito mukhang hindi naman na dyan, no? Si yeah. Chito Jaime. But it still has to be re respected by the defender. Wonder how Chito got the wound, though. Yeah, that could have been something that was already hit in previous plays because from what we saw on that incident... <laughs> ooh, how about that, Jander Mal? Putting in the band-aid for Kuya Chito. That's what you get for being the hero of Pahor in this game. But he's going to have to be replaced, right? Yeah. Because every time that there's blood on a player, that is automatically a mandatory substitution. Now, usually in these types of moments, when you have a mandatory substitution on the shooter, you get to choose your best free throw shooter off the bench. Yep. So Alvin Aldai will be doing the honors for Coach Alex Angeles. First one is good for another one of the members in the 1,000 points club. They actually did it consecutively. Itong sina Chito Jaime and Alvin Alday. Second one is no good. Alvin, one more try. Two out of three. just got a message from Alan Mangahas who played earlier today. He seems to be still in the venue watching 
the game. Might as well. This is some great action for you guys. A preview of our upcoming playoffs. These two teams might actually face each other in the second round of the South Division playoffs. Kwekute misfires. Rebound, JC. Excellent defensive stop right there for Zamboanga. That's really what they needed after that unsportsmanlike foul on Kika Ralipio. JC, Otto Paralipio, the handoff to JV. Marcelino will fire. In and out, rebound, Kwekute. James will go to Marquis. Top of the key, short. Rebound to Aldai. One more chance here for Bokoor. Aldai back to Yi. Eight on the shot clock. Kwekute against JV Marcelino. He used the screen. Step back. That's short. Good defense by Zamboanga. Kwekute is still on the floor. Numbers for the white shirts. Here's JC. Marcelino could not score. Rebound and put back. What happened? Oh my goodness. How about the MVP once again? JC Marcelino now has 10 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists in this game. John Narbal couldn't even get his body in there to try and challenge JC Marcelino for those offensive rebounds. You see here on the screens, James Quecote, he's cramping up. Remember, this is a guy who we have missed, that comes to James Quecote, because of an ankle injury obviously that put him on the sideline for a while and they also did not see action last week versus Pataan because the games inside the Marikina Sports Center were postponed so for all we know this might not actually be the last regular season game of Bacoor let's wait for further announcements regarding that because Pataan is still fighting for that number 18 in the North Division. Marikina as well had its game versus Quezon postponed. So watch out for that. Now Kwekute is being carried. It's that bad. Oh, that leg looks really stiff. Oh, we hope it's nothing too serious. Especially that Kakabalik niya lang from that ankle injury. And if you're Bacor, you wouldn't want this heading into the postseason. They've been haunted with injuries all season long. Now JC is at the stripe. First free throw is good for the MVP. 11 points now for JC. Again, this is Zamboanga's fight for a chance to defend its home court. For a couple more times in the playoffs. They're batting it out with the Quezon Huskers. That number four spot in the South Division. Nice steal by Garalipio. King will attack and feed to the wrong guy. Alwin Aldai. Bounce pass. Dermal almost walked. Then he was fouled. Oh, he definitely got away with a the travel there, but... A good presence of mind for him to still go up hard. Nermal has not been a factor in today's game, at least in terms of shooting the basketball. Nermal only with six points so far in this game. First free throw is good for the all-star starter of Bako Or. And that reminds me to remind everybody that Bako Or is missing Michael Cañete in this game. That's going to be a big-time talent that they would rely on from the playoffs. Yeah, so imagine that if you're Zamboanga, you're not even going up against a full-strength Bacoor team. Dermal gets two out of two. Eight points now on five out of six shooting from the strike. 84-81, approaching the last two minutes of this game. JB feeding to Adi Santos. It's basket and one. Before Zamboanga would exclusively have the ball in the hands of JC or Judel Fuentes in moments like this. But this time, they gave the liberty to JV Marcelino to try and create for them. Many people forget 
to how good of a creator JB also is. In fact, JC defers to his brother when asked who's the most magaling sa inyong dalawa. Yes. 87-81. John Nermal against the MVP of the league. Nermal backing down, no foul. Ball recovered by JC Marcelino. Abacor tried to go back to John Nermal, hoping that he would make something out of this situation. But if I were the strikers, I'd go back to the hot hand, Tito Jaime. He's not been able to touch the basketball the last few plays. Risky pass there. The ball ends up with Jodel. No good on the three-pointer. Offensive rebound, though, with 80 seconds to go. Zabuanga has eight on the shot clock. JC Marcelino up top. JC drives. There's the feed. Adi Santos has to fire. There it is. No basket. But the effort of the Twins, they have been splendid all night long. Well, I thought JC had the open three-point shot. Tito Jaime was giving him a lot of space. Instead, he decided to drive left. Nothing was happening. He had to give it up to Adi Santos to go for that short stab. Uh, let's see if they keep the basketball here, but it looks like they will. 87-81, a minute and eight seconds remaining. And again, folks, if you're a Baco Or fan, Yes, you can worry a bit, but not too much because you will still hold on to that number one seed in the South. Behind you are Batangas and Jensen, who will battle it out tomorrow in Nueva Ecija. This is actually more important for Zamboanga to try and fight for home court advantage in the South Division, something that they had up until the South Finals last year. And I'm sure a lot of people would argue they really needed that home court advantage last year. Oh yeah, I mean just the way that the other teams were playing in the postseason, you would you would have thought that there was an upset waiting to happen, but Tamakajan Zamboanga plays a lot different at the Mayor of Italiano and that Coliseum. See what happened here on the out-of-bounds sequence. It is going to be Zamboanga basketball. JB bringing it in. Now the ball is with JC. Zamboanga by six, screen up top. Marcelino will pull up. That short rebound, great effort by Adi Santos. He kept that ball alive. Shot clock down to seven. Fuentes leaning in, a couple of fakes. Two on the shot clock, Aralipio to beat the buzzer. That short. And Adi Santos, again with another offensive rebound. JV misses, and another offensive rebound. Oh, what about Zamboanga? It's been Caralipio and Adi Santos killing the strikers with their hustle. And that's the dagger. A three-pointer for JV Marcelino to fight for another day to defend their home court back in Zamboanga. What a crazy sequence, Galing to Zambanga family's brand sardines. How many possessions was that mix? Three possessions for Zambanga in one play. And here you see the cherry on top of the ice cream. JB Marcelino wide open on the left corner. Marky just too far to try and make a difference on that shot. Great play after great play. And then you finish that possession with an even greater shot. Everybody from that Zamboanga bench in joyful celebration because they are now 22.4 seconds away from getting this victory against the top seeds in the South. And again, we've talked about that home court advantage. You also might want to remember that this is a statement game for Zamboanga because if they do advance to the second round, against Bacoor, most likely. If you have that confidence, already having a victory in this venue, might as well carry on that confidence on the road in the playoffs as we get to see the home record of Bacoor. They are in danger of losing their second game at home. The last one 
was against Caloacan way early in our fifth season. And just like what we've been talking about all game long, Migs, this is this win could also is also actually gonna mean a validation para dito sa Zamboanga. Validation that they brought in the right coach. Validation that everything that Coach Louis has been trying to instill in his boys have been great things. With the visa in trouble, that's a steal and a breakaway for JC Marcelino who tried to throw it down. JV's there for the cleanup. Imagine if, if that went in. What a statement it could have been. That will do it, folks. What a showing by Zamboanga. Now they live to fight another day to defend their home court back in Zamboanga. They're still going to have to wait and watch that Quezon Province game this coming Saturday. But this is already a good start for them. You know what makes one thing we failed to mention during this game is how I feel now for Coach Alex Angeles because I'm sure he did have an axe to grind against Coach Louie last because he lost a lot of games in college to Coach Louie when he was still playing for San Beda. Remember, Coach Louie was a champion coach with the Letran Knights in the NCAA and he really put a lot of heartbreak into the San Beda program at that time. That Coach Alex Angeles was the star guard of that program. And our best player of the game is... Jodel Fuentes, 18 points, 5 rebounds and 2 assists. Now we know that JV Marcelino was able to uh, give the telling blows in the end game. Adi Santos and King Caralipio did a good job of uh, producing more opportunities off of the offensive glass. But it was Judel Fuentes who really set the tone for them all game long. His brilliance in being able to knock down shots did come in handy para sa Zamboanga as they invested a good lead early. We do give shout outs to guys like JC Marcelino, 12 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, Joseph Capaini, King Caralipio, Adi Santos, but now Judel Fuentes is with Mika Abisabis. Judel, grabe yung naging paghahanda para sa, para sa larong ito, no? Halos lahat ng tao talaga gumawa. Kwento mo naman sa akin yung practices nyo leading to this game. Uh, Una-una, papasalamat kami kay Lloyd sa binigay niyang panalo. Uh, yun nga, uh, every day, every ensayo namin, uh, naging ensayo kami ng 100% kasi nga, kailangan namin umangat pa kasi papunta na tayong playoffs. And sa, uh, kailangan namin madala yung, yung laro namin yun para sa playoffs. At yan na nga, daladala nyo na ang panalong ito sa playoffs. Meron pa kayong mga gustong batiin at pasalamatan, Judel? Uh, Una-una, nagpapasalamat kami kay Lloyd sa binigay ng panalo. Uh, binabati ko si Ma'am Anita Kao, Tipi Kao, at taga Sambuanga dyan. And sa pamilya ko sa Dabao, uh, sa asawa ko, sa anak ko, si Matia. Magbabirthday ngayong cover 2. Happy birthday, Matia. See you. I love you. And uh, uh, kay, happy birthday pala kay Bishop uh, Dodom Gloria. Uh, from uh, Taga Jensen and then sa mama papa ko sa Dabao and sa pamilya ng asawa ko kay Papa Joel kay Mama Elsie and then sa Bakmi Dabao Bakmi uh, Mawab Makati and sa lahat lahat and sa Taga Pangi Taga Pantaitan Taga Taga Tibungol and sa lahat ng uh, support sa amin sa Dagout sa revenge kila Marcelino Twins. Maraming salamat, Judel Fuentes. This player of the game is brought to you by OK Bet, the official partner of the MPBL. With OK Bet, together we win. Make it happy. Well, folks, I hope that you enjoyed that teaser for our upcoming MPBL playoffs. There's still so much more to be determined. Tomorrow, the number two seed in the South Division will be determined by that game between Jensen and Batanga. Sarangani will also take on Kalookan at 4 p.m. and then Nueva Ecija will give us that literal preview of the playoffs in the first round against the Pase Voyagers. Those two are locked in to face each other as well. Thank you so much for joining us in this glorious day here in Bacoor. For Mika Bisamis and Javi Palanya, my name is Mix Gomez. At ito po, ang Mahardika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino.